Fresh got fresh got plenty. What's up, everybody? It's you from IMU Performance Art, and today we're going to be reviewing, assembling, and demoing the Mood Hoops Future Wand Remote. If you want to skip straight to the assembly or the demo, uh, you can click here or here, and that should take you straight there. Seeing as you haven't clicked that, I'm going to guess that you want to get straight to the review, so let's do it. So I'm going to go through a few different categories of critiques and pros and cons um, to get a full overview of everywhere that this wand holds up and doesn't hold up so much. First we're going to start off with the balance. And I'm really, really happy to say that this wand comes pretty well balanced, straight out of the box. It also comes with a set of washers um, to customize the weighting to your preference. Now whether that's you want it slightly off balance, uh, which I have seen in the past, um, however, most of us want it perfectly balanced, and you can do that by adding washers to the top or bottom until it's satisfactory to you, which is a really cool way to get around um, the balance issues that a lot of smart wand manufacturers have. Secondly, I want to talk about the modes that this one has. It comes preloaded with 8-bit modes in seven different menus. Those menus are Motifs, Waveform, Spiral, Chill, Flame, Beacon, and Galaxy. This is probably my most favorite part about this wand. The modes are incredibly vibrant colored, as well as being super creative. Uh, most smart wands don't have modes this creative, and that's really why I picked up on this wand right whenever it released. I will, however, say that two of the menus, Flames and Beacon, are somewhat less usable. Flames, you can totally use it uh, while you're wanding, but it's only got one mode in the menu. If that's the only thing you want, awesome. Uh, wand with your flames. But um, I would have liked to see more uh, modes in the flame menu. Beacon, however, it has different small lights um, activating on it at different times. And while that might be cool to just have on, uh, it will certainly drain your battery. And I also just can't see wanding with it because it's not bright enough or uh, attention catching enough to really represent a good mode on a wand. So next I'd like to talk about the accessories that are available for this wand. Um, the options are end caps, contact grip, a palm grip, and the Technora string option. Now all of these are really cool, and um, the, the one thing that I do have to say negative about the contact grip is that it tends to unbalance your wand depending on how you put it on, because you do put it on yourself. It ships with a little roll. And that's what the assembly portion of this video is for. Um, so it can unbalance the wand. Um, also, it will get dirty uh, with time and it will rip and tear in different places. Now that's not as bad because you have an entire roll and you're certainly not going to use it whenever you're first putting it on. So uh, you can just replace the contact grip as it gets dirty. I also really like these contact end caps if you want to check those out right there. Now these I don't believe are released at this time. Um, these are perfectly spherical ones. And I really like them because they are the same size as my palm grip and the symmetrical side of me is just super happy about that. That's really cool and they also have UV options available, uh, which is also a really cool option for those of you that are frequently around UV lights. And the last thing that I have to say about the string is that definitely go for the Technor string or what I have on here is Shadow Cord. Um, the micro string that is available I would only say to get if you're a total beginner and you don't plan on using this wand for anything but beginner things, meaning no contact grip, no contact end caps, as light as the wand can be, and really fluid, upright wand motion. The reason that I say that is because I had the micro string as well and that broke within a week. So um, it definitely needed some stronger string to be able to support my style of wanding. And now about the remote. So the remote is an optional feature um, that will add somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 something dollars to uh, your purchase. And it really does make a lot of options accessible and it does open up the usability of the wand. The navigation, pause, and uh, favorites menu are all incredibly useful for you if you're a performer. A lot of us will tend to pick specific modes according to the theme that we're working with, or uh, have to sync with the music. For beginners, it's less useful, but also still really cool features. 
So if you're about it, I would definitely recommend getting that. And the brightness control has three different levels of brightness, so you can uh, conserve your battery life as well as choose how bright and in people's faces you'd want to be. And last but not least, a few things that didn't really fit in any categories. Um, I did want to point out that the wand is made with frosted polycarbonate tubing. Now this is different from every other uh, smart wand on the market because they use clear polycarbonate tubing. And I really think that uh, since this is frosted, it diffuses the light in a way that the patterns become more recognizable. And I really like that about this. Uh, so that's definitely a plus in my book. And lastly, their customer service is thebomb.com. I had a string issue with this, I had a battery issue with the remote, and um, the wand came and it was rattling. So I sent them an email, I said, look, uh, here are some things that are happening with my wand. Um, what's up with that, basically? And they said, ship it back, we'll pay for shipping, we'll pay for repairs. Uh, they basically let me do it for free, as well as they gave me these awesome new unreleased end caps. So, plus 20 points for Mood Hoops customer service. That was really awesome. So, that's all I have to say about this future wand. I would say that if I were going to rate it on like a 10 point scale, I'd probably give it like a 7.5 because of all the pros and cons that I just went over. So, uh, without further ado, let's get to the assembly. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to set up our future wand for contact wanding and toss wanding by adding silicone contact tape as well as a clear palm grip and two contact end caps for mood hips. The tools that I'm going to be using are uh, needle nose pliers, a small flathead screwdriver, and of course, scissors. And the first thing I'm going to want to do before anything else is test to make sure that it's balanced correctly. Moodoo prefers that you send the uh, wand back if it's incorrectly made before you do anything to it. Meaning, send it back before you turn it into a contact wand. So this angle is what we want to look at right here. A lot of times it will hang really low or it will hang really close to the string. Now with thicker wands, it's harder for it to hang close to the string because it will actually hit the string and force it downwards a little bit. So we give it a little bit of leeway there. And really what you're looking for is this angle right here. If your angle is about, what is that, like 30 degrees, maybe 20, um, then you're probably in good shape for the balance. And you definitely want to flow with it before turning it into contact. I've done all that, so now I'm ready to go ahead and start setting it up. First thing that we want to do is remove the end caps, and that's as simple as just sliding them off the ends. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our contact silicone tape and unwrap it a bit. So I'm going to start with a nice long strip and take the backing tape off. What's really great about this tape is that it's self-adhering. So it's not sticky and it won't stick to anything but itself. What that also means is that whenever you're wrapping your wand, you want to make sure that you wrap it very tightly and you want to make sure that there's some overlap with its stuff. So I'm going to start at an angle, like this. That way, it will still have contact with itself, but it will also progress down the wand as I wrap it. Okay, so now we've come to a point where we're overlapping the hole that the string is strung through for the wand. And we definitely do not want to do that because it will actually prevent us from being able to use the wand correctly because it won't let the string um, flow freely. So what we have to do at this point is we're actually going to unpeel it a little bit until we see that it is definitely above uh, the hole, which as you can tell right here, the hole is below the tape. So what we're going to do at this point is we're actually going to try to cut a straight line on the tape all the way around the wand. And this does not have to be exactly accurate. Um, anything really will work. And I'm going to start at that point directly above our hole, or not directly above, but 
I'm going to start at that point above our hole where I know that I can draw a straight line all the way around the lawn. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to cut that so that it goes straight along the lawn. Now, as you can tell, it isn't perfect. There are some ridges, but it will do the job. And that's the important part. Another thing that I do want to point out is that um, whenever we're wrapping down the lawn, we want to make sure that it overlaps the previous wrap. And we want to try to make those as even as possible. So we're actually going to try to um, make it even on the other side to keep the balance from getting off. So we can measure the tape from the point that we just cut all the way to the end of the tape and we're going to cut it off. Now we have an accurate measure of exactly how much tape we used on the first half of the lawn. We can use that to measure how much tape we need to use or about how much tape we need to use on the bottom half of the lawn. I'm going to go ahead and cut this all the way across. And since we started with the flat side at this end, I'm going to go ahead and start with the flat side at this end. Try to get the same angle that I wrapped at this end with this end. This is about the same angle that I used, so I'm just going to go for it. We'll see what happens. It looks like I've about run out of room, and I have a little bit too much tape. So what I'm going to do to fix this is I'm just going to cut it off uh, like I did before in as straight a line as possible. Okay, now we have two nearly horizontal strips of uh, contact wrap. So now what we want to do at this point is we're going to go apply our contact end caps. We can just simply slide it over each end. And this is really helpful because you'll notice whenever you apply this wrapping to begin with, since we started with the flat edge on the end, it actually left some exposed polycarbonate tubing here. What we can do is we can simply stretch these contact end caps over those exposed parts to cover them. That end is done, and off to the second end. Alright, second end is applied. And one thing that I did notice is a lot of times your silicone will sort of bubble up underneath the uh, contact end caps. What you can do to fix that is once your end cap is on, you can use your fingernail to smash those back in and under the silicone end cap. And that should work just fine. Once we've applied all this new stuff, uh, the weighting is almost definitely going to be off. However, it looks like the weighting on this guy is still pretty solid. Now one thing that you can do is you can apply um, some of the washers that ship with the wand into these end caps uh, to make the weighting a bit more balanced. Now it looks like the weight is already in one of these end caps, as you can see right here. So essentially what we're going to do is we're just going to put more weights into that end cap. And all you have to do to make that happen is grab one washer and push it in. As you can see, all I did was press it in, and it's stuck. I'm going to test our weighting again. Another way that we can tell if it's unevenly weighted is if the wand sways back and forth whenever, um, whenever we swing it side to side. Mine is doing a little bit of that, but not really a whole lot. I may even just keep this extra washer in there and see what happens. All right, now we have a contact wand. <clears throat> Our next and final step is to mount the palm grip instead of the finger loop. Now we're ready to go play.
living in the moment while we can, cause you never know. Just take the energy you got, baby, and let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. This path ain't get back, that's how life's supposed to circle Circle, circle, circle